everyone, I hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel and to a video that I'm really excited about. It's part of my Lessons with Lydia series, basically where I break down lots of style rules and tips um, in the hopes that it helps you in your own wardrobe. Um, so the aim of today is a little bit different, I've kind of flipped it on its head. Um, and this is going to be about traditional style rules that are worth breaking. And as I was actually filming this, I didn't really think about it before, but as I was thinking about it, there's a real common theme running throughout this video. I often talk about style rules. You'll, you'll kind of work out the theme as we go along and I'll talk about it. But um, I talk about style rules a lot. Style rules to me, I know people have varied opinions on them, but I do think um, it's always good to have those fundamental basics that can help you in your wardrobe, help you buy things so you don't end up making mistakes, overbuying, um, spending too much on something that you won't wear. It's not good for the environment. And I think to have those fundamental style rules that I talk about so much um, really is key. And I know they help so many of you in your own wardrobes. This is where my channel and my Instagram has come from. All we see on um, social media is nice outfits. We see the good outfits, but we don't know why it makes a good outfit. Um, and so I wanted to kind of take a back step and break down why things look good um, and why they don't as well. So you can see the contrast and difference. Um, so I thought it was quite important to debunk these particular style rules that I don't think feel very modern anymore and everything changes, everything's subjective. These are just personal ones that I think we don't really need to follow. Um, and like I said, they all fit a similar theme. So let's get into it so I can actually explain what I mean. So I think in traditional dressing, um, we wouldn't really mix metals very much. Usually we think, you know, gold goes with gold, silver goes with silver, rose gold with rose gold, and anything else can be, you know, a bit jarring. Maybe it doesn't go together. Um, so we probably stick to wearing all one color, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with. That looks great. Um, but I think not mixing metals, you're kind of missing out on a whole um, new range of looks that you can create. And there's certainly ways to do this. So I think if you did want to mix metals, then you can do it in a subtle way. So I'm showing you here, showed you the whole gold look, head to toe gold, um, which looks great, but maybe a bit matchy matchy. So moving on, what we could do is pair a bit of silver with the gold. And the absolute key to this is to not go over the top and pair, you know, gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver, because then we still end up looking matchy matchy and it looks a bit try hard. Um, but subtly we can incorporate the two together. So what I've done here is swap the belt for my YSL one. It's just got a very small silver buckle. So that's just one way. And you could stop there. You could keep that silver and everything else gold. Um, but what I've done is just take a couple of the gold pieces off so it's not overwhelming with gold and then one random silver piece, but just kind of subtly mix them together. So I've just popped on the silver bracelet and a silver ring just to bring in that metal um, and so it doesn't feel kind of on its own. It's accompanied by a couple of other silver pieces. It's intentional, but it doesn't look too try hard. So a way to do this, mixing metals, it's not easy, I would say, um, but do it in a subtle way and it becomes easy. So just a couple of pieces and it's something that I think you'll find creates a new look. It's something a bit different, it's something unexpected. Um, and I love nothing more actually than seeing somebody with a full arm of loads of bangles in different colors and shades. I think it's really interesting um, and gives some personality to your look instead of wearing that head to toe gold. It just feels like you kind of bought um, them all together. You just thought, oh, I'll just wear them all together. Um, but instead mixing in those pieces is a little bit more creative and just brings something else different. So uh, that's a style rule not to follow. Don't always mix your metals. So talking about um, mixing and matching, that leads me on really nicely to my next style rule that is worth breaking. So the next one is pairing together 
your shoes, belt and bag and they all have to be matching. It's absolutely not true. And I think a lot of people don't really do this anymore. It is a traditional rule, but then the other day I got a message on Instagram saying, um, how do I wear the Isabel Morant belt? It's the tan one. It's actually the one I'm showing in the cutaway. How do I wear that belt with not having matching shoes? The answer is, you don't need to. Um, nothing needs to match um, in terms of your accessories. As you can see here, we've got the tan bag, the tan belt and the tan shoes. And again, like the jewelry, it all feels a little bit contrived, a little bit fixed. And although it doesn't look, I don't think it looks bad at all, but I don't think it's necessary. I think again, talking about creativity and personality, that all matching look and tying your shoes and your bag and your belt together um, kind of takes away from that creativity. So what I would do instead, um, you could maybe match two pieces together. So an alternative way is by swapping out the belt. As you can see here, it doesn't have to be the belt. You could swap the bag, you could swap the shoes. Um, but the belt here just breaks the outfit up a little bit. It's still kind of tonal, it goes with the outfit, um, but it just takes away from that all matchy, matchy look. But you still feel cohesive because you've got the shoes and the bag that go together. Again, this though isn't necessary because what you could do is what I've got in the other cutaway um, and I've not matched any accessories here. So I've got the same shoes on, We've got some tan here, we've got the belt, but then I've gone for my Chloe bag. And again, it's all pretty tonal with the outfit. There's nothing, I'm not kind of putting random colors together. I've not got a red belt, lilac shoes and a orange bag. The fact that they're not all the same shade and not all matching um, just makes it feel a little bit more interesting. And it just kind of proves and shows that you don't need to match your accessories or your leather pieces together. Um, if you wanted to, you could do one or two, but I think matching everything together just feels a little bit fixed and dated. And before we move on to the next, I feel like just take a second to ask if you could hit the subscribe button whilst I've got you here. It would really be very much appreciated as we climb on up to 400,000 subscribers. Okay, next. This is probably like my biggest bugbear. Um, out of all of them. And that is a rule or idea that easiest way to tone down color is by pairing it with black. It's absolutely not the case. Um, and I know I don't wear loads and loads of color, but I do get asked, how do I combine color in my wardrobe? What I ask is that you don't pair it with black or try and avoid pairing it with black. I know it's it's not completely unavoidable and sometimes it looks great, but um, just think about pairing your colors with something else. So you can see here in the cutaway, I've got these black trousers on with the lilac jumper. And like I said, there's nothing really wrong with this, but I do feel like wearing black can kind of kill a color a little bit. You've got this gorgeous, bright lilac, but the black just kind of zaps the color away from it. Um, and I think this is the case with every color, to be honest, especially a bright, vibrant color like this. Um, and again, I do feel like that black and color, those color blocks together feel very dated now. Um, and again, so not creative. So alternatively, what you could do, you don't need to um, kind of go crazy with your colors, but instead of black, think about pairing your color with a neutral. Colors work really nicely. A lot of colors work really nicely with camels, warm neutral shades, whites even. If you didn't want to go for black, you could flip it on the head and go for whites, creams, just a kind of neutral, even tops. It doesn't have to be a light neutral, a gray. Um, Think about anything but black will look better with your color and bring it alive. So here I've got these camel trousers with the lilac on and I just feel like it keeps the color going, keeps the color there and fresh and different um, and gives it the pop that the color provides. So definitely don't think that the easiest way to wear color is with black. Avoid that 
if possible. And another creative or great way to wear colour is to go tonal. Um, I've not got an example of it here because I don't really have any lilac trousers, but if you are someone who loves to wear colour, go for a head to toe tonal outfit. Um, it doesn't even have to be a bright colour, something like olive greens, or you could even go for a blue shirt with some denim jeans. So it doesn't have to be, you know, in your face, real pops of colour. Um, to make it wearable, but just kind of think about something different than the black because it really does kind of suck the life out of the colour. So something else that I think so many people avoid or stay, well, stay away from, avoid in spring, summer is leather. And I think traditionally, it's a rule of thumb that leather isn't a good fabric for spring, summer. Obviously, if you're in a baking hot country, leather isn't the way forward, but you know, in spring, in that transitional weather, if you live in the UK or somewhere that doesn't get really hot, then leather is a great fabric for spring, summer, um, and neglecting kind of your pieces like that in your wardrobe stops you wearing it. It doesn't help maximize what you've got um, and it's not good for cost per wear. So if you've got a pair of leather trousers, a leather jacket, a leather um, blazer, don't avoid it for spring and summer. There are ways to make it feel light and fresh. And I think you'll find that wearing the leather creates a really nice contrast against your spring summer pieces. So here I'm wearing it with some tan sandals, my tan belt, um, my tank top that I'm wearing now, a blazer, just these lighter colors and tones and the more spring-like tones to combine with it. I think that's definitely the key um, is make sure you're going for the summery pieces. Don't go for the whole head to toe black look because it probably will feel a little bit more wintry, but going for those lighter colors really will allow you to wear leather. And like I said, I just feel like this is really cool with the sandals and the leather. It creates a lovely contrast. I do also love, I've done this in the past, wearing uh, leather trousers with my basket bag, an oversized shirt. And it, again, it just feels really effortless. And I think that is another, actually another overriding theme of this video is that all of the rules I am breaking or talking about breaking don't feel very creative. So by breaking those, kind of open up your creativity. The other overarching theme I was talking about, um, and I've still got one last point to demonstrate this, it's all about, all of these things I'm talking about, center around colors, fabrics, textures, not proportions. I know I talk so much in my style rules about proportions and balancing. And I never think that will date or go out of style because I always think you need some sort of proportion in your look. Um, but these particular things, things like colors, textures like the leather, the mixing of the metals, are all things you can kind of apply to your own wardrobe to think outside the box with. I mean, it doesn't have to apply to the rules that I'm talking about, um, but maybe your own. Think about what you can do with color that you've not done before, with textures that you've not done before. So yeah, I think that is an overarching theme of this video to take away from it. Colors, textures, and metals, that kind of thing, and how you can use those in a more creative way. So my final point or tip to break is the idea that you can't mix shades of white. Like you definitely, definitely can. And I think they look so chic together. And I love the idea of a head to toe mixed tonal white look. You don't have to match exactly your white to white. And if it's slightly off, you can't wear it. That's not the case. Those tones, especially if you have a few different tones in there, looks so chic and effortless. I think if maybe if you had matching tones head to toe and then one random thing that's slightly more creamy, that would look off. But if you have an all, different mixture of whites, off-whites, slightly creamy tones, pair them together and they work really well. So my um, example I'm showing you, jeans I'm wearing now and the tank top, they're definitely not the same white. The tank top is from Arquette. I love these tank tops, by the way. This top, I would say, is a very stark, bright white, like a true white. And then the jeans are definitely more of an off-white tone. The shoes I'm wearing with it, again, slightly, got a 
slight creamy feel to it, as does the blazer. It's an old one from 12 Stories, but just all those colors together create something a little bit different. And again, it allows you to be more creative and it allows you to utilize your pieces in your wardrobe. You may kind of um, struggle to pair some of the whites together with different things, but by opening your mind to pairing them all together, it really allows you to maximize your wardrobe, which is what I am all about, re-wearing, how to style, um, and making the most of what you've got. Um, so I hope this has been useful. I think it was quite a fun one for me to film, um, and it really got me thinking about the ways you can be creative and what rules really don't apply anymore. So if you did enjoy this video, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Like, leave me a comment with your favorite tip or your favorite um, style rule that you're going to break or that maybe you've stuck to in the past and now it's got you thinking about changing it. And also, I really love to know um, what videos you'd like to see next from me. Do you like these kind of lessons format? Would you like to see a vlog? Would you like to see more what I wore, some more relaxed videos, a day in the life? Or would you like me to do more of these kind of videos? I'd just like to know kind of your thoughts on that. So um, leave me a comment with that as well. Thanks so much for watching. Um, all the pieces will be linked below where possible. I've got quite a few older things in there, so alternatives will be found. Um, thanks again. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.